Young Millionaires Association. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the association. Joe. Ah! All right, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know I'm excited. Wealth Building Monday. Yep, your favorite show. My favorite show. Well, Friday football was good, and we'll get to that. Can't wait to this Friday to talk about Friday football. But right. today we are here. Welcome to the Wine May Nation podcast, episode number 20. Episode number 20. 20. Number 20. Getting there. Getting there. And those numbers are going up. Up. The numbers are going up. Good job, guys. Subscribing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, all right. Let's get started. If you're on right now, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Take a moment. Do it. Do it right now. Like, comment, and subscribe. Down in the comment section, hashtag YMA Nation. All of that helps. Helps the algorithm. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's start off and let's talk about the, not talk about, but let's do the drawing. Okay, let's get started. So if you guys are not familiar with the drawing, I'm going to start the music, get us pumped up, uh-huh. and Rebecca uh-huh. is going to pull two winners from last Monday drawing where someone... Went to the link and put in the keyword. So all you guys have to do sometime during this episode of the podcast, we're going to give you guys a keyword. And all you have to do is click the link in the description. It'll take you to the website. You put in that keyword in your name and you will be in the drawing. Good. Sounds yeah. good. Throughout the whole holidays. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, 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 winner number one is, you ready? Yeah. Tina Riley. All right. Tina Riley. Congratulations, Tina. At the beginning, when we first started doing the drawing, she's the win, 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 yes. Congratulations, Tina Riley. You just won yourself $25. Who we going to have next? Who we going to have next? Who is next? She's struggling. She's struggling. <laughs> well, I want to make sure I got yeah, one. Yeah, it's only one. Okay. It felt like two, and I was like, <laughs> I <laughs> had to make sure. Two. Yeah. <laughs> Tiffany Montiel. Tiffany Montiel, congratulations. All right. I beat you to it. <laughs> you just steal my job, y'all. Just get on sit over here. Congratulations, Chill. Tiffany. You just won yourself $25. And thank you for following the Wine May Nation podcast. Great job, guys. Great job. I'm actually live now, right? Are you recording me? Guess what? I'm recording. <laughs> <laughs> we have a we have a really good episode today. Yeah, I'm I'm ready. You We're said gonna, it, it's gonna be good. It, it it is it is good. See, he only gives me bits and pieces. Yeah, he don't give me a whole lot, so I have to wait like y'all do. I like the suspense in it though. Yeah, but because it has like we started here, and then we built up. We built up, we talked about credit, we talk about things like the five things of success, five things Goals, of failure. Right, right. Now we're gonna compile all that into what wealth building Monday, how to start a business. All right. One on one. Right. I can't go, I got thirty <laughs> minutes, so I can't go into <laughs> everything and do a class. But this is going to be... So you're just going to give the basics right now. The basics. The basics. The basics of how to start a business. And I know... Yeah, listen up. Listen up. A lot of people follow this 
wealth building Monday just for these t- t- these tips. Gotcha. I'm going to tell you guys how to start a business. All you future entrepreneurs and future business owners, how to start a business. Number one, the first thing that you have to do for any business is you have to have idea. Okay. <laughs> you have to have an idea yeah. like what type of business you are you going to start okay. right? right what type of I, I just wanted to see your face like <laughs> huh? Huh? I mean I have a lot of ideas right but so is it going to be a product right is it going to be a service, service. right like what are you going to sell so right what's your idea and when you and is it unique right is it oh you just pulled it let me hide my paper I didn't even look at his paper, y'all. Let me cover I didn't my look paper. At his paper. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, like it has to be something that stands out. What separates you from your competition? Or do you have competition? Or do you have competition? Like, are you offering something new that really may not have hit the market yet? And that's now, now, now that's unless you like um creating that that next spaceship, <laughs> or yeah, for that. Definitely. Like, are you creating something that's so unique that it's going to be ex- explosive in the market? Right. Which is like rare now because like almost like, like what can you create that's well you can, but what yeah. can you create? Now what the best thing to try to create right now is can you compete against any social media monsters? Right. Right. Because who's seeing TikTok coming? Right? right, like TikTok came and it, you it's know, it's like slowly started to catch right. on, and then next thing you know, like everyone is on TikTok. Mm-hmm. So, but you got to have an idea. Someone had an idea, and they said, I think it'd be great if people can can record themselves doing music, or and then it create it, it kind of evolved from just like the music to people doing right. humor and comedy on it. So but you got to have an idea and your idea has to be unique and it has to be something that can actually be accomplished. Right. 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 Which we talked about that. You talked about that before where when you create a goal, is it something that can truly realistic? Exactly. Right. Right. Cause you can't say I'm going to be the next man on the sun. Like, <laughs> like oh, what? No, you're going to be the first man on the sun, <laughs> and you're not coming back <laughs> unless you create something that unique. That, yeah, you'll be like a trillionaire. So the idea is one. Now, once you have that idea, now we're talking about how to how to start a business. So you, mm-hmm. the idea is here now. Right. Now to take it now, what's the name of it? So I have an idea. I'm going to start a new water. It has to have a name, right? The product Mm -hmm. has to have a name. So once you create that name, it has to be attractive, right? Mm -hmm. You just have to say, like, good water. That that might work, good water. (laughs) But it has to be something attractive that people like, I like that. I started off checking it every other week, just like most people do. Then it got out of control. I couldn't help myself. I started checking it day after day after day. I didn't realize that I was becoming addicted until my wife said something. What did she say? She said, it's just a credit score, relax. Are you checking your credit score? Huh? Uh, Hold on. But yeah, you have to have something attractive. And then once you find that name, then you want to make sure that that it can be used. So you have to check with your right. Secretary of State, right? So you go on the Secretary of State website and make sure that the name that you have chosen, like it has not. It's available. It's available. Right. Yeah. So look how we just moved them through there. I'm giving you guys the instructions. Ideal. The name, make sure that the name is available. Next, once that you do determine that the name, you're on the site, on the mm-hmm. on the Secretary of State website, and then here's the name, which is Joe Good Tasting Water. We're going to just use that. That's going to be the name of our product. 
Joe Good Taste in Water. Okay. Don't be surprised. I might be just throwing out something right now. So a year from now, when you guys see you go to Publix <laughs> or you go in the QT or the gas station and you say, Joe, good taste in water. Oh, man, that's the dude we're talking about on the podcast. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try that water because Joe, good okay. taste in water. It sounds like it might be good tasting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it could have flavors too. Peach. Yeah. Let me start getting sidetracked, but I'm just throwing out that. Okay. I think I'm going to do that. Okay. Joe Good Taste in Water. Gotcha. All right. So once you have the name and then you're on the site, then you want to file for it, right? But you have to understand what type, like what type of structure are you is going to need. So you're going to file for LLC, and you make that decision based on several things. Like the taxes, how right. how I have an idea and I'm going to sell it is this type of way, and based on my sales model, how am I going to tax? Mm-hmm. How do I want to be taxed on it? Right, right. So that makes a decision on how you file for that business, and then you have to also think. Um, Based on this type of business model, am I going to have shareholders? Am I going to have partners? Am I going to have members? So all of that factors in on are you going to file for LLC? Are you going to file for a partnership? Uh, And that's something that YMA Financial could help guide someone through if they need help answering those type of questions. Yes, definitely. YMA Financial, guys. So if you're interested in anything that we are talking about, YMA Financial, they specialize in these things on business startups, business expansion, all of those factors. I mean, every aspect, website. So business plan. plan, And that's going to be something I'm going to touch on. But, yes, www.ymafinancial.com. If you want to contact them, they're – Number is 864-249-1439, YMA Financial. Are you trying to start or grow your business? Well, welcome to YMA Financial, where we have created the ultimate platform for entrepreneurs and business owners. We specialize in small business startups. Our accredited business consultants will help turn your dream to a reality. We'll help obtain your business documentation, help you establish and build business credit, And whether you're working from home or storefront, we'll help fully launch your business. Check out our website at www.ymafinancial.com or give us a call at 888-531-6611. So what I get calls about, right, I want to file, I got an idea. And if there's like, say you have an idea and you want to sell like a product that's like, a dollar or five dollars, mm-hmm. right? Now you have to decide: Do I want to take on the all of the the obligations of, of having a company, or do I want to to operate as a sole proprietor? Gotcha. And the okay. reason that's important is like there are states out there that charge you if if you file for as a LLC, the annual fees is like eight hundred dollars, six hundred dollars, and as a small person that's like doing a business, a small uh, an entrepreneur that's just doing a business as a hobby, right? And you make like two or three hundred dollars per month, and then at the end of the year you have to pay eight hundred to the state, right? It may not make sense. It may not make financial sense. Financial sense, right? right. For um for you. So those like there's there's like a lot of things that you have to to consider, right? The next thing is once you file for your LLC, mm-hmm. then you need to file for your tax EIN. Okay. And you file for your tax EIN through the IRS. Gotcha. The importance of having a tax EIN is that number for one, if it, it's going to tie the IRS to be able to track, you know, like. How much you make? Revenue. Because you have to file for it, right? Right. 
And it's important because that tax EIN is almost like your idea is like a child. So you just gave birth to a child, and that child has a social now. Right. And that tax EIN is the social for this child. The the Secretary of State is like actually where the hospital so you just gave birth and they gave you the paperwork for your child, mm-hmm. your birth certificate. Right. For your child. That's the articles of it's organization, right. right? For that for that child. Your idea. And then now you got your tax EIN. The the next thing that you would need to do is a lot of people skip this. Your certificate of existence. Gotcha. Depending on the state that you're in, it's either going to be called your certificate of existence or your certificate of good standing. It's important to have that, and it's important to have it up front, too. Like, don't wait until, like, it's time to expand and that business asks you for that that form, and you don't have it. So do it up front. So you file for your articles, you file for your tax EIN. So basically you need a checklist. A checklist. But right. here is the checklist right here right. that I'm I'm saying. So, and the importance of having that is, is not only does it, it shows that you as a business is in good standing in your home state, mm-hmm. but also when you're trying to expand. So if I'm here in South Carolina and I want to expand to North Carolina and they ask me for that form because – they need to verify that I'm in good standing in my home state before I file for a new company in their state. So I I, I have it. I have right. everything up front. What's the keyword? The keyword is business plan. The business plan, and that is the next thing that we're going to talk about is your business plan. Okay. And this, I will like, say. This is like one of the most important parts of the whole thing, right? Let's give Rebecca a round of applause. <laughs> your business plan is the most important document that you are going to need. Your business plan, and it doesn't have to be a 40-page, 60-page booklet. Well, it's going to evolve anyway. As the business evolves, your business plan will evolve as well, it right? It will change and adapt to the, to the business. business. Right. But, yeah, right. Th- that's important. So even if you start off with a five-page form, it's just certain things that's inside that that you should have. Right. That's Especially important. financials, that's right? Yeah, financials. And a lot of people don't really have the experience. So if you don't have the experience again, why may why finan- may financial, guys? Why may financial? Get all the assistance that you need. But the business plan, you just starting off. So say I have an idea. We just walk through the steps. I got right. a, I have an idea. I have a name. The name is Joe's Good Taste in Water. Woo, she got it. <laughs> Joe's Good Taste in Water. So I got my name. I got it filed. Right. With the state. I got my tax EIN. I got my, my certificate Get of good it. standing. Okay. And now my business plan. What is my business plan? My business plan is my roadmap that tells me everything that I should be doing from the beginning to the end, from day one to week one to week two to week three to week four, my first quarter, my second quarter, my year one, my year two. My business plan tells me everything that I should be doing in regards to marketing, in mm-hmm. regards to growth and the scaling, at what point should I be hiring? I was hiring? just going to say, it, it should tell you how your business or how quickly your business should grow. And if you supersede your business business plan and the growth rate, then you know, hey, I mean, I may need to make some changes to my business plan because I was projecting this in year two and we're at six months, and I'm already meeting those goals. Right. So now I need to adjust because this is clearly going to be, you know, a year four or year, you know, right. three goal now. Right. And it's ever changing. Right. Ever changing, right? It may change in your first month. Like you may say, my doors are going to open in January of, 20, of 2021. Right. And then things change. Like, oh, you know what? The roof at this building that I was planning on 
occupying needs to be replaced. Needs, yeah, so that's going to take up take two weeks or right. three weeks, and I got to get this done. I placed an order on this product, and it's going to take two weeks to get. So, but you that's just have to adjust. That's why the business plan should give you a lot of like that extra time too, right? So you always want to put a little extra time in there for if things come up. So even if you're um, ahead behind schedule, you're still on time in your business plan. That's right? a, that's a good point because in your plan you should have milestones, mm-hmm. and a milestone tells me on January first I should have done this. On the 5th, I should have done this. On the 15th, I should have done this. So all the things I should have accomplished to that day up, like my grand opening. Uh And if it don't, then I just adjust my milestones. But I have everything in front of me. I know, like, everything I need to do. I know I need to get furniture. I know I need to get inventory. I know with the inventory, I'm going to need, like, bags and boxes for shipping. Right. I'm going to need popcorn, you know, like the um, popcorn things that go inside the boxes, like all those type of things. Your business plan explains everything. It talks about the cost of mm-hmm. each item of those boxes. It, it talks about the cost of your planned shipping, that cost, and how to pass on those costs to your consumers where it makes financial sense for you. Right. Your business plan is important. So now let's go. I'm going to dive a bit deep into this when we talk about the plan because I feel this is the most important sector of starting a business. Gotcha. All right. So, again, I did say that it doesn't have to be some huge book, right? But there are certain things that you do need in a plan. Number one, an executive summary. And what that is is if I ask you, Rebecca, I understand you got a company, you got to real estate. Real estate. Can you tell me about it? You probably could explain that to me in like forty-five couple, right. seconds, right? In a spill. Right. right. Here's what we do. Here, here's our price range mm-hmm. that we deal with. Our normal, our average consumer. consumer the right. areas that that we see ourselves in. Mm-hmm. All of that. Thirty seconds. Right. Your eh, eh, that summary should be able to be explained just that that quickly. Right. Okay. So, but it, it could be two pages. Mm-hmm. But you, as a business owner, should be able to break that down. Why is that important is because most banks, if you need a startup loan, they are going to want to see a plan. Right. And that's going to be in the bank's base, whether you get funding off of the type of business it is, Right. Right. So in your plan, it, they may not fund that type of business. So the business plan will let them know, hey, this is the type of business that we deal with or we don't. Right. Correct? And correct. Because especially right now during the COVID, like it's a lot of industries that they are not going to lend to. Right. Because of the risk margin. Restaurants is one. Oh, really? Restaurants is one. It's interesting. That's a hard market right now. Real estate, that's two. Those are, But those are always challenging to get funding for. And I think we've talked about that in Real Estate Wednesday a bit where we talk about your credit needs to be a little bit higher now for some of the lenders. Right. Um, and how it was unnormalized for the types of loans for a certain period of time. So that's exactly right. But that goes hand in hand because most of the time, if you're going to own a operate a business, you're going to need some type of real estate s- space for that business, and a business plan comes is going to be needed for those funding right that, that type of loan too. Right, unless you're like online and you're going to work from home, right. but if you're going to have a space, you're going to need a plan. Right, like if you have a product and you have to package the product or. You need warehouse to store products or right. something like that. And employees. Right. Right. So you need to understand the cost of those employees. Right. Right. So your executive summary, make sure that's like key. And all it is is a summary of everything compiled, like your financials. You're going to take all of your financials and you're going to put into this little small paragraph that says, I need X amount of dollars of startup costs. Like just that easy. And it's going to be spent on X, Y, and Z. I'm going to spend 
X amount on this, Y on this, and Z on this. Right. Right. So demographics, you have to know. So right now, if I say I'm going to sell Joe Good Taste in Water, Mm -hmm. and I do a product sample out, right? Right. And so now I need to understand who's going to buy this. So I'm going to do a sample tasting. And if I do a sample tasting and I'm taking down data, data mm -hmm. I see, okay, well, I see that 80% of African Americans like the water. Mm -hmm. um, but Caucasians, Hispanics, Asians, they don't really like the water. I can't go and put this product in an area that's not predominantly African American because it's not going to sell. It's not going to sell. That's right. like open up a um, a black beauty salon in a predominantly Asian community uh, or right. area, right? Right. So your demographic is important. Understanding that age group, understanding who's buying from you. Understanding their their um needs too, right? Right. So your demographics, the area location is important, and understanding your consumers is important. Next thing um is, I could talk about water, but is there a demand for it? Right. Right. And is the market oversaturated, which it is in water? Right. And is the taste gonna compete be competitive. competitive against like the people like the high, who's the top right, sellers exactly. right now and can this taste compete with those right but if you have a problem there's always a solution mm -hmm. so people have to drink right and people are going to drink water and people are going to buy water you just have to understand your niche and your niche sometimes is not always the taste your niche could be the presentation of your product where you get into the mind of your consumer and show them why they need your product. Or partnering with a business that needs your product. Or like, partnering with a business that needs your product, yes. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing, too, is in your business plan, you. You are important in your business plan. You are important in your business plan because when someone reads your plan, they want to know, do this person have the experience level to be able to operate this, this business, business in this company? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So if I have no experience in selling water, right, that means I need to partner with someone who possibly do have experience or I need to outsource. Right. Right. But my business plan would explain all of that. Or hire uh, operations manager who has experience in that field. Right. But then you have to budget in that salary. Right. And say, hey, this is this person has experience in this. I'm going to bring them in, and they're going to handle the operations of the business. Right. Ooh, that was good. But I'm not went done. By fast. That went by fast. But one of the important things is marketing. That that would be like almost number two, right? Marketing is important. Maybe number three. Yeah. Well, I'm just going down to the yeah the checklist form. But marketing, there are four P's to marketing, and that's product, price, promotion, and place. So we're going to talk about the store and my water, and say I got a product. What's mm -hmm. my price? Is my price going to be attractive to a consumer? And do I have a pro? Motion to help drive it. Am I promoting it? Mm -hmm. Is people seeing it online? Are there ads on it? And then is it in the right place? What we just talked about. Right. Location is key. Right. And a, and the final thing, guys, is financials. Financials, because you can have the most brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. You could put it on the market. It starts to sell. But if you have no idea on how much money you are spending and how much money you are making and taking home, then you will be like. Financials is key to everything. Everything. I mean, even in your personal life. Yeah. But in I the mean, business. Business yeah. is even more so. You got to have some experience. And the, and, the, and the thing that I've learned is you don't have to go and be an expert at everything. You just put the right people in place. 
to, that already have that expertise. Ex- right. Right. The experience. Right. So either you hire someone that can do the job or you outsource the work. Like if you've never been a bookkeeper and you don't know how to put in data into QuickBooks or one of the products like that right. that help analyze your financials, then you hire someone who does have experience in right. that. And or that you can, learn it. Or you learn it. Or you it. learn it. But a lot of times when you're starting a business, you don't have time. Have that time. And that's what I was going to say. Either you learn it and you think, do I have the time? Like, do I have the time to be on the opposite side of that camera trying to learn how to shoot? Or do I just put a hire and put an expert in that place there. that does it? Well, right. I'm not spending, like, weeks and months trying to perfect this. Right. I'll just stay in my lane. Stay in your lane. Yeah, you know, that is crazy <laughs> because that is kind of going to feed over into Real, Real Estate, Estate Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, that man. That is crazy. I know, like, this, like, we went through each step and on the opposite side, you guys, That's a like, lot of information. Watching. Yeah, you, you watching and, you know, it's just kind of slow. Like, but you're just gathering everything. But it's so important that if your goal is to become an entrepreneur, you need to understand these steps and to follow these steps. Right. How to right. start a business. I just gave you guys the key right there. Right. How to start a business. Right. Guys, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with us. Yes. It, it, it seemed like it was just like mellow. And, mellow, and now it's just like... <laughs> All right, because I'm ready for right. Wednesday. We was on some serious stuff It, it was on serious because I want them to understand, like, this is yeah. how you start a business. Listen, YMA Financial. YMA Financial, www.ymafinancial.com. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Don't just let me say it. Do it right now. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe and like. It takes one second to really just press that button. Yeah, that's it. Guys. Keyword, you heard it. If you didn't hear it, you better go back and and play (laughs) it again. (laughs) So we'll see you on Wednesday for Wealth Build. um, Real Estate Wednesday. I'm ready to go back. I'm trying to steal the show. I'm trying to steal the show. show. Real Estate Wednesday. We'll see you guys then. You guys have a great day. Young Millionaires Association. (laughs) Yeah, see, that's the association. Joe. Ah!